Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World. That is our 302,000 mile 92 NSX. And this is a lovely fall day in East Tennessee. In this video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of myth busting, if you will, talking about driving a transverse engine car like that around a steeply banked oval like, say, Daytona International Speedway. This myth comes to me by way of several forum posts and group posts, mainly in NSX groups, talking about the potential mechanical dangers of driving an NSX on a banked track. We're going to talk about this from a few different angles, I, some pun intended there, I guess. I'll just own that one. But uh, first, we're going to discuss the, the mechanics of this perceived problem. Then we are going to look at the actual physics involved with driving a car like this on a steeply banked oval. And then lastly, we're going to look at some actual data from some practical experience. And for all of this, we're, we are going to be referencing Daytona International Speedway for a couple of reasons. First, we just spent a weekend there driving this car around the road course configuration as seen in the Rolex 24 at Daytona um, endurance race. And then also though, because the 31 degree banking at Daytona is I believe the steepest banking anywhere in the world that sees regular sports car road racing. Uh, there are, the steeper banking does exist, but in the United States, we're looking at Talladega and Winchester speedways, both of which are only ovals. And in Europe, I think anything that has steeper banking than that is either currently a test track only or a museum. So with all that said though, that's what we're doing today. Let's jump in the garage and get started. First things first, let's outline the myth that we're looking to test, that an NSX can oil starve on steeply banked turns due to gravity. Given we're in the United States and race direction on all rovals that I'm aware of is counterclockwise, we're going to assume left-handed banking. The question at hand is if you take an NSX and tilt it 31 degrees sideways, will things get expensive? Really what we're asking are some hard questions of the NSX's oil pan or sump layout. The first generation NSX uses a transverse engine layout, meaning the long dimension of the motor and by extension the oil pan is across the width of the car, not along its length. It also uses a wet sump oiling system, so the only reservoir of oil for the oil pump to draw from is that which is in the oil pan. Here is a closer view of an NSX C-Series motor and oil pan as seen from behind. You can see the shape of the oil pan at the bottom with the deepest part on the right. Here is the approximate location of the oil pickup in the pan. As you can see, it is towards the right hand side of the oil pan, somewhat centered on the deepest portion of the pan. So if we look at our NSX now on our 31 degree banking, you may be able to guess at the problem, but to spell it out, if we take our oil pan slash reservoir and tilt it at such an extreme angle, there's a potential that all of the oil could slosh or drain downhill and leave the oil pickup dry and the motor without lubrication. So now that we understand the potential problem, the first thing we need to know is at what angle things would get legitimately dangerous. To figure that out, I've set up a worst case scenario bench test here. So here we have, as it would come from the factory, an NSX oil pan from NA1 or from a C-Series motor at least. I think I pulled it off of a Legend. Uh, we have a little extra baffling just to keep our oil substitute in the system. And we have an angle gauge over here. Now according to the NSX Brain Trust, including a couple of engineers and a professional driver with proficiency in vehicle development, the worst case scenario for oil volume in the pan at any given time shouldn't be less than three quarts or so. That is assuming your VTEC, which is oil actuated, is fully engaged and sucking up to feasibly a uh, full quart of oil up into each head, and then another you know, half quart or so in the lines and filters. So the stock NSX has a, a oil, total oil volume of five and a half quarts. So then we end up with three left in the sump uh, from which the oil pump can draw. The question then is, how far can we tilt this before we uncover our oil, uh, oil pickup marker down there? Now the oil pickup is essentially on the bottom of the pan, so we can just go by when that is actually dry. And we're gonna start tilting here, and we're gonna kinda go through and we'll, we'll talk our way through some, through some uh, recognizable circuits as we go. So we're at zero degrees right now, so everything is dead level. We're on flat ground. 
If we were to go and say park our car on the uh, banking at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, we'd be at about 10 degrees, which is what that looks like. Moving a little further, we get to the, uh, the area of the, uh, was it the carousel, famous carousel on the Nürburgring Nordschleife, at about 15 degrees. Moving a little further, we get to modern day Zandvoort. We'd have to drive backwards to get it to tilt this direction in our NSX, but that's around 18. Then moving to a track I've been to, uh, 24 degrees for Charlotte Motor Speedway. And this is starting to get into the sketchy area, actually, now that we look at it. So let's just go ahead and let's go the remaining five degrees here to get us to roughly 30. So there's roughly 30 degrees, which is talking about, uh, for you UK folks, that's Brooklyn's, uh, old Brooklyn circuit. A little further than that is Daytona, and we are now basically dry on our pickup at this point. Uh, beyond that, though, you'd have uh, Talladega, which again is just an oval. Uh, or if you wanted to go real ham, you could go for, uh, I have to scoot this back a little bit here, go for the full 45 degree uh, vintage Monza banking. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. Anyway, so getting back to our, our 30 degree test, though, which is, okay, yeah, so we're roughly 30 degrees with it sitting there. You can see that we're, uh, our oil pickup is mostly uncovered at this point, which is probably not a good thing. Now, again, this is kind of a, a worst case, also static test. So this is if we, we ran the car low on oil got it, you know, all the oil sucked out of the pan and into the system that could be sucked out of the pan and into the system, and then instantaneously stopped the car on 30 degree banking. So it's not a real world scenario, but it does show that 30 degrees in some situations could be enough to uh, concern you with your NSX if you have a, you know, a stock unbaffled oil pan. And even with a baffle, if left sitting for long enough, the baffle will slow down the slosh, but it won't eliminate the slosh. So that's what we have here with three quarts. Now, just for, for argument's sake, what if we add a quart back? So if we add another quart of oil back in here at 30 degrees, we're back to maybe 85%, 90% of this covered, which, uh, you know, I, it's probably a little thin for, uh, for my taste, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is just kind of to illustrate that we're talking about worst case scenario here in a static test. Now, as I said, we're sitting still with this test. And when we were on the track at Daytona, we definitely weren't sitting still. And to see what that looks like, we've got to take this, what we kind of can visualize now from this, and then apply a little bit of math to it. Now, it's been a hot minute since I've had to put together a free body diagram or calculate really anything of consequence and dealing with a body of liquid in that context is nothing that I've ever done, so I reached out to my engineer on retainer, who is also my brother, for some help. Starting with the hard numbers for Daytona, we know that the angle of the banking is 31 degrees. We know the radius of the two turns in question is about 1,000 feet or 305 meters. Reviewing video, the slowest I traveled on the steeper parts of the banking was around 80 miles per hour, and the quickest I was going while still on the banking was around 120. Gravity, we'll assume, is the old 9.81 meters per squared constant. Beyond that, it's down to calculating the perceived centrifugal force and its effect on the oil in the pan, which is where my brother and I assume his trusty slide rule come into play. Pulling information from some existing research done at Penn State and Washington universities, and then doing some interpretation, he came up with the following. I'm not going to try and explain the math in detail. After all, I still want you to subscribe when this is all over. But the short version is this. On 1,000 foot radius, 31 degree banking at 80 miles per hour, about 130 kilometers per hour, the slosh angle of the oil should only be about 9 degrees away from the pickup, which is still well inside our worst case safe zone from our bench test. At 120 miles per hour, a little over 190 kilometers per hour, there should now be a 13 degree slosh towards the pickup. So once you go fast enough, probably over the 95 mile per hour range, the centrifugal force pushing the car into the banking is enough to overcome the pull of gravity and effectively push the oil in the pan uphill. So having done the math, let's look at some real world data from our actual trip to Daytona. 
I don't usually include a G meter on a video overlay, but we have one here to somewhat validate our math today. This meter is measuring the force using the orientation of my phone as level, so its point of reference tilts with the car. You can see as we first turn onto the steeper portion of banking that the G meter comes back towards the center a little bit, even though we're turning left, which on flat ground would push our meter dot to the right. As we pick up speed, even though the banking gets steeper, the dot creeps further to the right, showing that the net force is pointing quote unquote uphill. Just to clarify, it's bouncing around a little bit because it only samples once per second and we're getting vibrated by the car, etc. So when that thing's getting interpolated, it's kind of going back towards zero occasionally. But you can see even so, it never notably goes left of the center line, meaning that our net force is always pointing towards the outside of the turn and up the banking. Through the bus stop chicane, you can see the meter slide to the left because we're turning right and loading the car in that direction. And then we see a repeat of the slight recentering and then steady right movement as we pick up speed through what would be NASCAR turns three and four. So bringing things full circle, we have defined our myth. We have looked at the math and the physics surrounding it. We've explored it in small scale on a bench test, and then finally looked at some real world data from actually going and doing the thing that we're talking about, which is driving a transverse engine car, specifically an NSX in this case, on a steeply banked turn. So if we're gonna put this on the please don't sue me Mythbusters scale of uh, confirmation, I think we have to put this in the plausible but unlikely category. If there was a situation where you were gonna park, you know, just get yourself in a static situation of parking your NSX or transverse engine car on a banking more than 15 or 20 degrees, I would definitely file that under the sketchy to ill-advised uh, category of actions there. <laughs> However, in a more real world scenario, if you're gonna go and take your NSX to a track day at Daytona, um, or Charlotte or somewhere else that's a you know high banked oval or high banked roval as it may be. Uh, I, it, if you're going at anything above a pedestrian speed around that banking, then all of the evidence seems to suggest that you'll be fine. Now there could be an oddball circumstance, like if you were in, if you had a red flag situation where they want you to stop your car because they need to get emergency vehicles on the track or something like that, and you are mid-banking when that flag flies, you know, personally, I might be inclined to make sure my car slows to a stop on the apron rather than just parking it on the angled banking, uh, you know, or if I had to park it on the angled banking, I would turn it off and then coast it onto the apron before restarting uh, just to make sure that there was oil, you know, all the oil hadn't run away from the pickup. But uh, that's, that's pretty fringe and we're kind of grasping at situational straws there, but things that could happen. But that is uh, where we're going to leave it for today. I appreciate you guys kind of coming along with me on this, on this, you know, geeky tangent, because it's been a video that I've been really curious to make uh, ever since I read that stuff, you know, some of those posts years and years ago. And back then when I was still like, you know, I could still do math, <laughs> it wasn't rusty. And I'd done kind of some rough calculations myself. I'm like, hang on, that doesn't make sense. All the G forces should still be pointing in the friendly direction, but uh, you know, it's kind of cool to get confirmation. I do appreciate my brother for helping me out with the complicated math there, thank you. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool to make and I definitely didn't want to make it though until I had gone and actually driven you know, the car around Daytona and it having made it back in one piece as it did, nothing, you know, <laughs> the NSX is fine. I we're driving it around the other day, and it's been a you know a week now since we've been back. But uh, so speaking of driving Daytona, though that uh, track feature video should be look up uh, end of this week, early next week, depending on when I get a little bit of collaborative footage that I'm waiting on, and then after that, you could look for Liz and I if you're going to be at the Petit Le Mans at Road Atlanta. Um, if you're in that area and you want to stop by, look for us in the Ac in or around the Acura Car Corral. Uh, hopefully weather holds up for that event. It should be a good time. Acura competing for other, a uh, few more championships, and it's kind of cool to have a horse in the race there. But uh, <laughs> So uh, again, thanks for watching, and that's what we've got coming up. But uh, yeah, thanks again, and uh, don't forget to click subscribe if you enjoyed the video. But until next time, I'm Richard. This is Lap of the World. We'll see you guys all in the next video, if not at the track.